Gorillas and lions are two of Africa's most famous animals, both symbols of great strength and power. But finding these two impressive species in the same location is near impossible. Gorillas not only prefer tropical rainforest, they actually only inhabit the wettest of African rainforests on the far east and far west ends of the Congo rainforest. Lions, on the other hand, prefer savanna and dry woodland, though they can be flexible and will venture into denser forests to some degree. Between their ideal habitats is a wide barrier of gradual changes in rainfall, or high mountain ranges serving as a climate divide. In almost every case, gorillas and lions are separated by great distance, walls of rock, or severe elevation changes in almost every case. There is one exception. From space, you can see Bateke, a strip of beige intruding into the dark green heart of equatorial Africa. This is a peninsula of savanna habitat, reaching north into some of the Earth's wettest rainforest. And the line between these two radically different ecosystems is razor thin. Based on climate data alone, you would expect this region to be thick rainforest just like its surroundings. But to understand the cause of this anomaly, you should turn your attention from the clouds in the sky to the ground beneath your feet. When you stand on the Bateke Plateau, you're standing on a sleeping giant, an ancient dune system. During the Eocene, a drier climate created a great sand sea, which stretched all the way north to this location. Today, rain that falls on this sand and fractured sandstone rapidly percolates downward, leaving little water for tree roots. Grasses and drought-tolerant shrubs dominate instead. Another side effect of this great mass of sand is very clear, very consistent rivers. Nearly all the rain that falls on this plateau rapidly becomes groundwater rather than surface runoff, and the groundwater feeds exiting streams. Like a giant earth sponge, the plateau stores the water and releases it during drier times. As a result, the rivers exiting the Bateke Plateau are among the most hydrologically stable rivers in the world. And they're also among the most dilute, virtually unchanged from pure rainwater. With such consistent groundwater, Bateke acts like a moderating reservoir for both the Congo and Ogalwe River. The dry, sandy surface of this plateau is a challenging place for indigenous people to live, but those challenging conditions have brought about unique culture. For instance, the creation of pineapple wine. Pineapples are a crop that uses cam photosynthesis, like cacti, the most drought-tolerant form of photosynthesis. Although they're a New World crop, centuries have passed since they were brought to Africa and naturalized, becoming ingrained in the indigenous culture. People living on the Bateke savanna grow pineapples because they demand little water from the sandy soil. Peanuts also do well in the sand, and sesame, arguably the most drought-tolerant seed crop, can pick up the slack. Once again, distinct food culture is intertwined with a distinct environment. The wide, open spaces of the plateau are a bizarre ecotone, to say the least. This is probably the only place you can see western lowland gorillas venture out into grassland that reaches to the horizon. Other forest species like the African forest elephant, Sidatunga, Red River Hog, Chimpanzee, and Mandrill cling to the forest edge and venture out opportunistically. For savanna species like the serval and side-striped jackal, this savanna is like a welcoming peninsula reaching out into an intimidating sea of green. Even savanna species like the spotted hyena have been sighted here. Historically, this savanna was solidly within the lion's stomping grounds. Hunting in the 19th and 20th century rapidly disintegrated this lion kingdom. But was it lost entirely? It was thought so until 2014, when trail cameras captured a lone male on an elephant path. DNA analysis of his hair suggests he's not a confused wanderer from the south, but more likely one of the last of the Bateke lions that used to roam this region in greater number. Whether he truly is the last, or whether there are more to be found, is of course unclear. But a plan to release more lions from Botswana and Namibia into Bateke has been put into motion, at least two females for this lonely male. Considering this region once had a thriving lion population, the potential for recovery is certainly there. Regardless, this lone male is a testament to the resilience of the species, and a sign that there's still much to learn about equatorial Africa, especially the strange landscape of the Bateke Plateau. Thanks for watching.